Hey guys, it's Matt here, and in this video, we'll be using a cellular iPad as my main phone for a week. So this is gonna be an interesting challenge, I feel. I'll be using this for a week with my SIM card in it as a normal phone, and we'll see how it goes. Honestly, think it shouldn't be too bad, but you never know. I've never actually tried doing this before. So in this video, I'll give my review of the device as well, especially because of how old it is. Also, just to see, can an iPad be used as a phone? So I've actually got a trip to go on during this challenge. So I'll bring this along for the ride as well. I'll be going to Chicago, so that'll be interesting just to see if I'm walking around in streets and things. Using this as my daily device, it will be inconvenient for sure, but it's part of the challenge, I guess. So yeah, this challenge is going to be interesting, especially because I just got AirPod Pros for Christmas well this does not see them it'll see these just fine the regular airpods yeah it sees regular airpods perfectly fine it has no issues with these these it has no clue about and i think if i try to pair these to it it's going to kind of get confused this is not compatible with those at least not natively they'd still work with it but i'll have to figure that out now what makes this very different this time around is that i'll be using this in chicago to record stuff which obviously the camera on this thing sucks so it'll be a good camera test as well yeah It'll definitely be a very interesting experience to say the least. So we're gonna pop the SIM card in right now because it's not gonna be an exact seven day thing. I'm pretty sure it actually is gonna go a bit over. This challenge will be over when I get home from Chicago. Hey guys, it is day two of the challenge. Now I didn't really record much yesterday because I was very busy, but well, here we are today with day two and I'll just tell you how it went. Let's just say it wasn't honestly that terrible, but it wasn't amazing either. First of all, having a giant iPad looking around is kind of annoying to say the least. It's not terrible. And I think if you had an iPad mini, that'd be kind of a different story because if I'm remembering correctly, it's like a little bit bigger than the Pro Max, which isn't terrible for a lot of people. So I think if you had a mini, it'd be fine. With the iPad that I've got, it's kind of a pain. <laughs> Along with this iPad has no touch ID. It makes it annoying because I have to type in my passcode every time to unlock the device, which isn't that big of a deal, but still kind of annoying. All right, guys. It's quite late in the night, it's like very late. <laughs> and I've got my iPad here. It's actually been going really well, the challenge has been. It's been really nice to have an iPad with a huge battery in it as well. It's still, it's a shame how big it is, but it's an iPad, it makes, it makes sense. It's part of the challenge. On to day three, hopefully this goes easier because I don't probably have to really go anywhere tomorrow. It's been a very busy few days with Christmas and stuff like that. So not really shown much of this on camera. If it wants to unlock, that'd be awesome. But yeah, you can see how I've got this iPad set up. It's very similar to the last video that you saw on this thing and I don't need this app installed on here anymore. Yeah, you can see how oversized the app icons are. That has actually been kind of an annoying thing that newer iPads wouldn't really have a problem with. The app icons on this are huge and you can set them this way on newer iPadOS versions, but it's like, my gosh, it is kind of annoying when it comes to dealing with this stuff. Oh, my Wi-Fi's turned off apparently. Yeah, having cellular on this, it's been super nice. Being able to just lug around an iPad, which mostly most of the time i just use it as a big streaming service while also being able to run like discord or something like that on the side which is super convenient if i do say so maybe going on to day three i need to go ahead and set an alarm on this thing now i understand bedtime they actually got rid of this on newer ipads which sucks because the bedtime thing is super nice it's only on iphone and ipod touch i think i don't remember though i think it yeah it's on ipod touch because they moved it to the health app which doesn't exist on here yes yeah, so i've got an alarm there we go Oh yeah, alarms used to look like that. I forgot about that. Hey guys, it's day three of using the iPad Air 1 as a phone per week. So far, it's actually been kind of annoying, but I mean, it's been kind of nice. The battery on here has been awesome. I've really loved how long the battery lasts on this thing. And even though it doesn't have full support for AirPod Pros, it still works with them, which is really nice as well. So that's something I've been able to use. But yeah, to be honest, this thing's quite cumbersome to use as like a phone, which does not surprise me. It's just part of using a giant iPad for a phone, which makes sense. So this doesn't fit in any of my pockets. It doesn't fit in really anything. Thankfully, my coat pocket and the coat I'm actually wearing right now actually does fit this thing, which is really convenient. I didn't fully plan for that when I first got this thing, so it's really nice to have. Along with having this as like a nightstand device is really nice as well. We can have a giant iPad like this just sitting on the side of my bed if I want to watch like videos or something. That's really nice too. Who knows, maybe I'll use this thing for that. I'm not totally sure yet, but it's been really nice so far. Maybe I could see someone do this with like an iPad mini or something like that. And I'm totally, if, if I get a new iPad mini or something like that, I'd throw cellular on it because it's honestly really useful with cellular. It's been really nice to just have like a full on iPad that has cellular on it. 
because then I can just use like my music and stuff on like an iPad without having to use like a hotspot on my phone, which I actually did for a vacation with my iPad 8th gen. The phone completely died, so <laughs> even without me using it, the hotspot drained it from 100 to zero, so I didn't have any internet for a little while until the phone charged again. I guess that was my fault for not really paying attention, but still, it's really annoying to not have that. So it's really nice to not have to use a hotspot, but yeah, otherwise, the challenge has been going decent. I've still got most of it left to do since I'm only on day three, but I'm sure it will go by pretty fast. Hey guys, it is day four of using the iPad Air for a week as a phone. So far, it's actually been quite annoying. Not at all surprised that I'm saying this, but it's really nice to be able to use like a smaller device and bring it around because obviously bringing this thing around hasn't been fun. Even though I can bring it around at like different grocery stores and things with my coat because the pocket actually fits for that. That's not obviously going to work in like the summertime when I don't wear a coat and none of my pockets on any of my pants fit this thing. So nor do I, I don't bring like a backpack around either. So I literally have to carry this thing around the entire time. Would I recommend that you go out and like use an iPad as your phone? Maybe if it's a mini, but otherwise I don't think you should. Now, along with the hard part about with these iPads is they don't let you use SMS texting, nor do they receive phone calls in the traditional sense anyways. They will still work if, if you receive like a Discord call, this will ring, but that's because it's through the app and it uses your cell data for that. So, and FaceTime audio calls and video calls and iMessage still work. So if you only text friends and you can use FaceTime audio or something, you don't have a phone number, there you go. Now this device here is actually on iOS 12. It's not terrible to use, but it's really annoying to not have the latest version of iOS. Obviously, if I bought like a new iPad and did something like that, if I bought like an iPad mini and did a video on it, I'm pretty sure it'd go much better than using this thing because this is a monumental pain to use. But I think if I were to use a mini, which is easily pocketable, I think that'd go much better. And honestly, I'd love to, but I don't have the, I don't have a use for an iPad mini right now. Maybe down the road when I need to get a new iPad, I'll get an iPad mini with cell data, but right now I don't, I don't need it. Hey guys, it's day six of using the iPad Air 1 for a week. So there are gonna be eight days in this challenge because I'll be leaving for a Chicago trip tomorrow and I'll be documenting my trip solely on my iPad Air 1 just to see how well the cameras hold up. I'm currently on my iPod Touch right now just because I don't wanna lug around my iPad while going for walks and I'm totally okay with using my iPod Touch because that's not part of the challenge, it's just, me using my iPad is my phone, but I can still use my other devices if I need to, like what I'm doing here. Camera quality is probably not the greatest. I know this doesn't really have image stabilization on the front camera, so sorry about that, even though this is literally the latest iPad touch, <laughs> but. And yes, I forgot to record anything yesterday, but it's also because not much really that interesting happened yesterday. I'll also be, this the big bulk of this video will be during my Chicago trip, just to see how actually traveling with this thing will be, which is gonna be, probably the most interesting part of this video. It'll probably be the biggest part as well. So it's gonna be interesting to say the least. And yes, I forgot to record anything yesterday, but it's also because not much really that interesting happened yesterday. The big bulk of this video will be during my Chicago trip, just to see how actually traveling with this thing will be, which is gonna be probably the most interesting part of this video. It'll probably be the biggest part as well. So it's gonna be interesting to say the least. So excuse my like very messy bed right now because I'm still just packing up stuff, but I've got my backpack here and I've got some clothes in here. It doesn't need to be super neat. These will be the clothes that I'll be wearing and a ring, my Apple watch as well. I, I know that technically that can't pair to one of these, but I still have a phone and I still want to be able to wear this. So technically you should be able to pair a series zero Apple watch with one of these, like with this Apple watch here. You should theoretically be able to pair that to this. If there was a way to get the Apple Watch app installed on here, that might make for a future, like a good future video if I can actually succeed with making the Apple Watch app install on here. I've wanted to try it, but I have not had any luck with it. So what we're gonna do now is just make sure I've got everything. I'll make sure to put like other supplies in here. <laughs> I'll get these on later because it's still kind of early in the morning ish not really but <laughs> enough for me to still be wearing pajamas and i'll be throwing these uh i actually should probably be putting these both in here now now i think about it well you know i'm gonna probably need one i'll put this one my apple watch charger away because my apple watch will last the rest of the day just fine and have quite a bit of spare battery left so we'll just throw that in here and chances are i'll need to bring this in the car so then my ipad battery will probably last a decent amount of time probably not the entire trip it'll last a decent amount of time i'd say 
Oh, right. I had to take out all my school stuff uh, for this. So I've got all my folders, a bunch of pens and stuff here as well. I'll just leave it here because I'll be able to get back in my backpack because I've got school coming on the 10th of January. That's when my semester starts again for college. <sighs> So fun to be a YouTuber and be at college. <laughs> and by that, I mean, it's been a pain. <laughs> Not that I don't love doing YouTube. It's one of my favorite things to do, but it is such a pain to record anything and edit stuff during college. I know I'm just rambling at this point, but this is a mad stack video, I ramble. So I've got this charger in here. I don't think I'm gonna need anything else. I was very much tempted to bring like my iPod touch just because this device is like super convenient. I can download my entire music library on there without needing a hotspot. And it will pair to like my AirPods which I have sitting here. And what I should do as well is make sure the stems are still properly. So I'm gonna need my iPad Touch 7 for that. Even though I'm probably, I, I don't know if I'm gonna bring this or not. I don't think I will, but I still need to check and see if my AirPods, I knew it. It resets these. I don't know why it does that, but like it sets it to nothing. Like you can't just select nothing here, but it sets these to nothing and it's so annoying. But yeah, there we go. So that's been reset. That's one thing that is really annoying about iOS 12. It will reset your AirPods to like random things. So like Siri was one of them, noise canceling was another. One time it set both of them to nothing, which is not something that you're supposed to be able to do. But yeah. So if you're gonna be using a device with like iOS 12, keep that in mind that you'll eventually lose your functionality of your noise canceling uh, right from holding the stems. You still can enable it. It's still in the Bluetooth settings of the iPad. You can't enable transparency mode though, which kind of sucks. But yeah, that's just something that you can't do. And it's really annoying. <laughs> There we go. So I think that's pretty much everything that I need. There's really not much I need. This backpack will cover everything. Obviously, I've got the iPad that will be going with me. This phone that I'm using to record will not be going with me. This will be a very interesting challenge. I'll try to document some of the trip as well. That's obviously, like I said, it's going to be the bulk of the video. So I'm going to hopefully get this thing. This thing's already fully charged. Yeah, it's fully charged. So this thing's ready to go. So it's now just dependent on me to get everything that I need done. Oh, and I just remembered something. I wish I had gone with iPad minis for this challenge and not something this friggin' big. Because iPad minis, these are actually like pocketable. So like this would fit in like a pant pocket. I don't know if it'll fit in this one, but like I said, I'd love to do this challenge with like an iPad mini, especially like if I can get my hands on one, like a cellular iPad mini four, because those still run the latest software. So that would make it easier for me. Now I would ideally love to use like an iPad mini five or even an iPad mini six, if I could get one brand new. Uh, I don't have the money for that. So we're not doing that. <laughs> it is much later in the day. It's getting close to time when we're gonna be leaving soon and got my stuff packed up for the trip. So yeah, the iPad might be sitting in here um, at some point. I'm not totally sure yet. They'll probably just be in my coat like it usually is. So. Yeah, pretty much ready to go. So, how did the trip in Chicago go? Well, it wasn't actually too bad. I had a lot of fun there. The main part here was, how did the iPad hold up? And honestly, it was a lifesaver. In Chicago, there is a lot of places that you have to walk around in, as you probably saw from some of the clips before. My phone, with how many directions I needed to get, would have died, because I ended the day with that iPad at 37%. So that means that my phone, with getting all the walking directions that I did, it would have been dead. It probably would have lasted if I had a battery backup with me, but even then I'm kind of skeptical about that. Very happy that I brought this iPad with me on the trip because it honestly was super awesome and having directions on like a bigger screen was really nice. Other than that though, it was very much a pain to bring around. <laughs> So when I was sitting at tables at restaurants and stuff, I couldn't just pull out my phone to use it. I had to pull out this big iPad, which was fine. There was nothing really wrong with it. It just took up a lot of space on the table. So it was kind of annoying to use. The pictures that it took were 
Eh, uh, they were okay. It did better on some areas than it did other ones. It was okay. I was kind of sad that I didn't bring a better camera because I would have loved to get better b-roll and other shots that would have made this video probably better, but this is what the limitations are of this device and this is how it turned out. So overall this challenge did teach me a lot, at least with this iPad and this trip. Since I've never done something on a challenge like this before where I've actually gone to a place that's completely out of state, it made this interesting because I really had to depend on this iPad more than I have probably ever depended on any other device because this was my main method of communication, it was my main method of entertainment when we were just sitting in the hotel where I was probably about to go to bed, I used this thing. It was really helpful, honestly. I'm very glad I brought it on the trip. There were times when it was cumbersome, but overall it was a better experience than my phone would have been. Even though it was slower and unfortunately only ran iPad OS 12, it was better. I ultimately am happy I brought it with me over my phone. All right, so it is the end of the challenge. I'm back home and I'm ready to give my thoughts on how the original iPad Air was as a phone. For starters, if you're gonna go with an iPad as a phone, don't go for one that's this old. I bought this specifically, this iPad Air, because I wanted to see what a cellular iPad would be like, but also because I actually do plan on using this thing more than just for the challenge. I've used this thing before this challenge. I brought it over different places and it's been very convenient. Now, just because I got this old an iPad doesn't mean you should too. I got this because I specifically knew what I was going to use and I knew that this iPad would be able to handle it. And and it does, it's a bit slow, but it handles it and I paid like 70 bucks for it. So it's cheap, it's something I was able to kind of get as a stopgap, but it works really well. However, that doesn't mean you should go out and get one that's this old. I'd suggest that you even go out and get like an iPad Air 2 because those will last a lot longer than this will, especially because this device is stuck on iOS 12. So this iPad already lost support. It's still getting some minor security updates, but this device here isn't going to last that much longer, I feel, in the modern world. A lot of apps have already cut support for iOS 12. They still work and there are some app developers that are still developing their app for iOS 12, like YouTube works on 12, Bandcamp works on 12, Audius works on 12, Discord works on 12. So yeah, this iPad is nice, I will say, for what I needed to use it for. In fact, being able to use a full-size iPad with a home screen like this and having a dock to be able to store a bunch of different applications, and that's something that with an iPad, it does really well. In fact, even being able to pop open like an iPhone app like this and then bring open another app I can bring it open on the side here and be able to use that while something else is running in the background. And then when I'm done using it, I can swipe it away. Well, I guess on this iPad, you can just tap out of it. But yeah, it's been super convenient. How would I say this would be as like a phone? This does not have any kind of phone calling capabilities or anything of the sort. It has texting via iMessage with its data and you've got FaceTime audio and video calls. That means that you will not be able to make SMS texts or make phone calls with your SIM card in here. The SIM card will only allow for data. So yeah, would I go ahead and say you should get a cellular iPad as a phone? Well, I would say yes, but only with a few like rare cases where you could actually daily one. I'd actually totally love to daily an iPad, but I wouldn't daily this one. This thing's old and it's big and it's annoying. Uh, iPad OS is a lot more powerful than iOS is in a lot of regards. So if you go ahead and get yourself like an iPad mini 6 with cellular data, I could totally see that being used as a phone. In fact, Mac address actually made a very good video on doing just that. Honestly, it's really cool. I totally love to daily an iPad mini as my phone and I'm being legitimate here. I'm not just saying that. Now, unfortunately, could I really do it? Probably not because of like my situation. I've got my own phone number with SMS texting and I text people who run Android. I can't exactly stay in contact with them if I were to swap my SIM to an iPad. So any phone calls that I would have received on this iPad would have been dropped because this iPad does not support them. In fact, all cellular iPads don't support them. It's a dumb limitation. I don't understand why it's like that, to be honest, but it's just how it is. I'm not totally sure why it's like that, but yeah, it's how it is. Theoretically, there's no reason for the, these devices to not be able to get phone calls. I wish they could, and theoretically, these should be able to pair with Apple Watches as well. I would totally love to pair my Series Zero Apple Watch to this because even though this one's 12, you can still pair a Series Zero Apple Watch to an iPhone 5S or a 6 because the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 5S 
Both require that your Apple Watch be running watchOS 5 or earlier in order to pair with it, because iOS 12 came out with watchOS 5, meaning that the only watch that you can actually fully utilize, and I've talked about this before when I did my other using my unsupported devices extravaganza for a month, I talked about that in that video, I think a bit more in depth because I'm not gonna go over it too much in this video, but the Apple Watch Series Zero should theoretically be able to pair one of these. Maybe there's a way I can get it to work. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'll have to experiment with that in a different video if I ever do figure it out. I don't think I'll probably release a video if I can't figure it out, that'd be kind of pointless, but yeah, I'd love to see that. I don't exactly know how to get that watch app installed on here to be honest with you, but if you go out and get like an iPad mini six, then I would say, yeah, you could use it as a phone or even like an iPad mini five or even an iPad mini four. I wouldn't go out and daily an iPad mini four for me personally, I'd want to daily something brand new. But yeah, so that's exactly the reason why I'm not gonna daily an iPad forever. Tell me in the comments what device I should be trying out next for a week because I do actually have plans to do some other devices. I do have future plans to record some other devices for a week. I'm not totally sure which ones just yet. I'd love to get my hands on an original SE and try that out because it'll still run the latest version of iOS and probably not very much longer, but that would be another one of those month videos. Not like a using for a week video, that'd be a month video just because that is an officially supported device that shouldn't be terribly difficult. But yeah, otherwise that's about it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, then click the like button, get subscribed if you like the content that you see on the channel. And with that, I wish you guys all a happy new year. Hopefully your new year's day went really well. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you all later. Bye guys.